Hello, I'm Luca Coasters and today I'll be reviewing Right Happiness at Plops Land Pan. Right Happiness opened back in July 2021 and I managed to ride in October of that year, managing to get a total of 12 rides including night rides on it. I was looking forward to this ride since its announcement, but it was only when I saw it test that I realised that it really had potential to be one of the best coasters in the world. Having finally ridden it only a few months after opening, all I can say is that this coaster did not disappoint. The ride managed to fit into a fairly tight footprint, going over pre-existing paths and the lake in the centre of the park. The actual entrance to this ride is quite close to the front of the park, however it is annoying as it is only accessible from one path, so if you want to for example walk from Anubis to Ride to Happiness, you end up having to walk around the whole park despite them being quite close to each other. The ride itself looks really nice, I'm not the biggest fan of the colour scheme, however the setting and theming of the coaster is great. The coaster is themed to Tomorrowland, an EDM festival which takes place in Belgium, however the theming is very loose and lacks a story. The first part of the queue line is indoors and there are some cool steep punk style theming. You then go into the outdoor part of the queue line which is under the brake runs of the coaster. This part of the queue is fairly bland, but then the queue line goes upstairs and indoors again, right under the station of the ride, featuring some more good theming. You then go up the stairs and arrive in the station. When in the station you can choose your row with the back car often getting the biggest line, and the middle rows having the smallest. Whilst every row in this coaster is incredible, I actually preferred the front car for reasons I'll explain later in this video. The station also features great theming with projections, music and moving gears, and overall it just looks amazing and really lively. The trains for this coaster whilst being the exact same as Time Travellers also look incredible, and they really fit with the theming. The trains are extremely comfortable and they feature the new macro strings which come down and check automatically when the ride up pushes the button on the side of the car. This allows for fast dispatches and overall the system is just really cool. These are probably my favourite coaster trains as the seats and restraints are so comfortable and also what puts us above other Mac trains is that the restraints don't come down nearly as much during the ride so it's much harder to get stapled. Once the ride dispatches, the onboard music begins and you start the ride by going straight into a twisted Jojo roll whilst the train starts spinning. In the front you get some incredible, strong and sustained hang time. Before riding I was worried that this inversion would be uncomfortable because of how slow it was, but it actually wasn't, partially because of the restraints, but also as the train spins, which makes the movement feel a lot more natural. I also love the interaction of this element as you are right above the paths below, making the element even more exciting. The further back in the train you are, the less sustained the hang time is, so I'd say that this element is actually better in the front. The train then rolls onto the first launch track while still spinning, sometimes a lot if the train is unbalanced, and then the music builds up before the train launches. This isn't the strongest launch, but right after you launch the train hits a spin booster which sends the car spinning like crazy. This turns a mild launch into a really exciting one, as you can often go through a few rotations before the launch is even over. The train then climbs up the 33 meter top hat, giving great positives, and when you crest the top hat in the front you get some incredibly strong and violent airtime, which when facing forwards is on the level of Skyrocket 2's, if not even better. You feel like you're going to be launched out of the car in this absolutely brutal moment of airtime. And if that wasn't insane enough, you can also experience this crazy airtime moment backwards, making it feel even more aggressive, especially as you can't see it coming, which secures this element as one of my all time favourite airtime moments. Unfortunately, the further back in the train you go, the weaker the airtime, only giving mild flow to in the back, but it's still fun nonetheless. The train then navigates an outward bank turn at the top of this element, which gives some weird laterals, and if you're facing forwards you do get thrown forward a bit. However, this part is definitely not the most insane. But in this element, the music builds up, creating anticipation for the upcoming drop. What is so cool is that the drop in the music is timed perfectly for the drop in this ride. In the front, this element only gives flow to, but further back in the train the airtime is much stronger, with it delivering ridiculously strong and violent airtime in the back. In the back, it's still not as strong or violent as the previous element in the front, however it is still insane, being my second favourite drop on any coaster. Facing forward is insane enough, but facing backwards you are not only flung out of your seat but also flung forward, and at this point it just feels like the ride is trying to kill you. You will then slam back into your seat in a strong moment of positives in this valley, which feels even stronger because of the contrast and forces from the strong air to the positives. The ride then rises up into the banana roll. When entering, the front row ride is whipped around a bit before receiving a solid dose of hang time. In the back, the transition into the element is a lot more smooth, and then you smoothly whip out as well. And I would say this element flows better in the back, however this inversion is not the most insane, as it is not too snappy and the rotation is not pronounced enough. 
However, it does provide an opportunity to just vibe with the amazing onboard music whilst gracefully floating through the inversion. Depending on the spin, this inversion can be quite disorienting, especially as it leads straight into the vertical loop. The entrance into the loop is fairly forceful, but the loop itself is quite drawn out, giving nice floaty hang time as you invert. However, due to the lack of rotation, this loop is not too aggressive. This inversion is definitely the weakest on the ride, and one of the overall weakest elements. However, this goes to show how good the rest of the ride is, as it is a great loop and you're doing it while spinning as well. The coaster then rises up into a zero G roll. If you go into the inversion facing forwards, it is solid and fairly whippy, especially in the back. But if you enter sideways and perform a flip, it's absolutely insane. You are flung forward and out of your seat whilst navigating the element, making it so much more insane, especially if you do a backflip. The ride then goes through a turn over the water as you enter the worst element on the ride. This S hill gets a lot of hate, but it was actually better than I expected, especially if you get a good rotation through it. This element provides a brief moment of floater on laterals, giving the element a bit of a kick, but it is really a break from the insanity of the rest of the ride. This element would be much better if it crested earlier and was more similar to a regular twisted hill, like on Time Traveller, however that would have maybe been too much for some people. The ride then slides into the second launch. The acceleration on this launch is surprising as it has quite a kick to it, but what really makes this is the airtime hill during the launch. In the front you get some solid floater, which is made more aggressive by the added acceleration. However in the back you actually get some weak ejector, which combined with the snappy acceleration makes it one of my favourite launches, giving a teaser for the insane second half of the ride. As soon as the ride exits the launch, it rises up into the double inverting dive loop. As the ride completes two inversions run rising up, the first inversion is incredibly tight and hence very whippy. In the front the train is violently flipped over, which is incredible when facing sideways as you are violently thrown forward, similar to the previous zero G roll, but even more extreme. You then continue to rotate beyond 360 degrees as you traverse the second inversion, which features more hang time. In the back, the first inversion is more hang time focused, but the hang time transitions into float as you enter the second inversion, before being whipped back down to the ground as the train exits the element. This element is one of my all time favourite inversions as it's so aggressive yet disorienting, as you just keep on rotating for so long, combined with the out of control spinning, and in the front, this inversion is just ridiculous. The coaster then enters another fairly intense valley before rising up into a massive airtime hill. In the front you get some fairly strong and sustained ejector in the first half before being whipped to the side of the crest of the hill, making the hill even more aggressive. And yet again when facing outwards it is made even more extreme. In the back you only get weak ejector, however the snap out of the hill is more violent as you are violently flung whilst being thrown out of your seat. This ridiculously aggressive element leads into a solid overbank which gives you a brief moment to recover. However you can't fully recover before entering the insane finale of the ride. The train then navigates a double up. The first hill provides ridiculously strong airtime in the front, on par with the final hill on Skyrush, and you are violently launched into a restraints. In the back it is slightly weaker but still insane. The train then rises up into the second hill of the double up, which is equally as strong but even more sustained. You are launched out of your seat again, and whilst it is slightly more violent in the front, the strength of the final hill is pretty equal throughout the whole train. These two hills are already insane enough, but the fact that you can go through these in any rotation makes it even more insane. It is definitely best going through the hills backwards, as you can't see them coming, making them feel even more aggressive, and the fact that you can experience some of the strongest air on any coaster backwards is just insane. The ride then enters a brake run, and after every ride I was completely blown away. I first actually rode this coaster on the back for the first couple of rides, and it was so good that I was worried to ride in the front car in case it would disappoint, but then it ended up being somehow even better in the front car. This coaster is filled with ridiculously strong air, aggressive inversions and great hang time, so it really incorporates everything you could want. The biggest flaw with this ride is the relatively dead spots. The banana roll, the loop and the S could have all been a lot better, but they are still all at least decent and certainly not boring, but they do stop the ride from being perfect. But overall this ride is just so much fun. Not only does it have a strong layout, but then it has the spinning aspect as well, and the great onboard music which makes the ride that much better. Riding this coaster at night was the most fun I've had in any coaster and I just wanted to get back in line after every ride. Bright to Happiness is definitely one of the most extreme coasters ever built and it almost borders on being too much, but not quite, making it still really re-rideable while still being ridiculous. You have to get on this ride, it is not only unique, but also manages to deliver one of the best ride experiences ever. It is probably the closest ride I've experienced to being perfect, 
with the only problem being there are three relatively weak elements. But those are not enough to stop me from giving this coaster a strong 10 out of 10. You have to ride this coaster if you have the opportunity. It is definitely one of the best coasters in the world and it ranks extremely high for me. So, I would love to hear your thoughts on this coaster in the comment section below and if you enjoyed this video make sure to like and subscribe.